we know this is a text because it is in general and also it has a backslash. Also, if we go to the period for January in 2019, we are going to find that there is a text there. So we have to get the year, the month, then convert it into a numeric column. By that way, we will be able to find the month between the presidential period. So for the year, since it is a text, we are going to work with the left function in order to take the first four letters, in this case these letters will be numbers, from the period. And it is done. We have all years since 1993 to 2020. Then almost the same will be done for the month. But we also have the right function. And from the period, we will be taking the last two charts. It looks well, but if we see, there are months from January to December and also an R1. That value is because in the period we checked before, the last two charts are R1. So, instead of working with the right function, we are going to work with another function. This function is mid. We are going to get some mid charge from period since the sixth charge. We are going to take two charts and it is done. Now in our filter, we can see just months from January to December. Then we are going to add a new column for the period. It will be named PER. And we are going to do the concatenation between the year and the month. It looks almost well, but currently it is a text and we have to convert it to a number. We can do it with the number value function. And it is done. Now we have it as a number. We just have to change the accounting format into a general format and it is done. Now it is a numeric column. Then we are going to add a new column for the president. And now we are going to look for the period between the presidential period in order to find who was the president in that period. So for doing that, we are going to work with the lockup function. In this case, we should think, how are we going to do the lockup? As you can see, we have all the data by this way. It is a matrix, and we are going to check in a vertical way. So we have to work with the VLOCKUP function and do it equal to b lockup, I will be looking for the period in the presidential table, the name of the table, presidential period, 
The call index is the number of the column that will be returned. In this case, we are going to get the president name. And it is the third column. When we need an exact match between the first column and the value that we are going to find, we need to work with false. But in this case, we are not going to match with an exact value. So we need to work with the true value for the lockup parameter. And that's it. We got it. In the first period, the president is Carlos Salinas de Gortari until 1994, when Ernesto Cedillo Ponce de Leon came to the presidents. And if everything worked well, we should see Andres Manuel López Obrador as the last president. And it is here. Now, we are going to get the max, mean, average, range, standard deviation, variance, and the number of exportations and importations working with database functions in Excel. Database functions in Excel are more complex in a little bit than another functions because we have to satisfy some criteria and all of these criteria should be in a range. So let's see an example before to get all the data that we have to calculate. Well, now let's talk about database functions. There are some ideas that you have to take care. In this case, do not forget that the column year and month are text. They look like numbers, but they aren't. In all the table, we just have two columns as numbers, and they are balance and PER. Now, in order to show you how to work with database functions, we are going to work with the database count function. And as the normal count function, it just counts how many cells had a value. Well, let's do it. First, we are going to count how many cells have a balance for 1993. So let's do it. We are going to work with the decount function. We have to pass the database, and in this case, the database is the table that we defined previously. It is called balance. But if you see, balance means the table without headers. And we need to take also the headers. For that, we are going to add sharp all. And we have now the whole database. The field that we are going to apply the count function is balance and it is the second field in the table. Now we have to define the criteria. In this case the criteria should be 
count all the balance where the year is 1993 and we are going to define it by a range i will be writing range just in order to preserve the function the range should be done like this first we have to write the name of the column in this case it is year now since it is a text we can write the criteria by two ways first is by equal to equal to 1993 now we are going to set the range in the decount function and this is the range now we have the result it is 12 because if we choose just the rows where the year is 1993 we have 12 rows and all of them have a balance also because it is a text we can write 1993 and that is okay but if we want to count all the rows that are greater than 1993 we are not able to get it done because it is not a number and we can work with greater than less than greater or equal than or less or equal than just with numeric columns there are some cases where we have to take conditions around more than one column in this case we are going to count how many cells have a balance when the year is 1993 and the month is 3 we are going to work with month and it should be equal to 01 but take care that if i write 01 in excel excel will be casting it as a number and we have to preserve it as text for doing that we have to add an apostrophe at the beginning then o1 and it means that it is a text now we just have to change the range in order to take that range and it is from h14 to i15 and it is done we have one because we just have one cell that satisfy all the criteria and it is about having the year 1993 and the month one also if we want to know how many cells have a balance where the month is 01 we can change just the range from i14 to i15 and we got 28 by filtering we can see 28 rows if you see we are counting 
how many cells have a balance when the year is 1993 and the month is 01? What if we want to see how many cells have a balance but they have to satisfy two conditions? For instance, when the year is 1993 and the month is 01. And also, we are going to count the cells when the month is 03. It is easy. We just have now to change the range and it will be from age 14 to, to I 16. In this case, we also get 28 rows. In the first condition, we have one row. And from the second condition, we have 27 rows. Let's see. One row satisfy the criteria about the year and month and we have twenty seven rows satisfying the month equal to O three. As you can see, we got 27 rows. So, as a small conclusion, when you have to satisfy a criteria with two or more conditions at the same time, you should write it in the same row of the criteria. And if you want to have two or more conditions and they can be satisfied one or other, you should write those conditions in a different row in the criteria range. Now, Let's see another example with numeric columns. We want to know how much cells of the balance column has a value and the period is between 1993 01 and 1993-12. We can write the criteria. The name of the column is per, and the value is bigger or equal than 1993-01, and less than 1993 12. And we are going to have the criteria range changed. It should be from age 14 to age 16. And let's see. The result is 326 but it is wrong why do you think it is wrong well it is wrong because we are talking about conditions and they are in a different row in this case 
the row is asking for rows where PER is greater or equal than 1993 02 or it is less than 1993 12 and if we can see all their values in the PER column are greater or equal than 1993.01 and in the criteria we are setting that the row has to satisfy this condition or this one but we need to satisfy both at the same time so for doing that we are going to add another pair header and the condition like this by this way the criteria range should be from h14 to i15 and it is done. Both conditions are satisfied at the same time. 12 rows. You should take care about not have empty rows in the criteria range because it means all the rows. Let's see an example. In this case, if I take the criteria range from H14 to I16, we are having an empty row in the criteria range. And the result will be 326. And it is. Just take care about that. we can continue doing our exercise so for the first president which is carlos salinas de gortari we are going to get the max value of the balance for his records so we need to work with the the max function where the database is all balance table but we need to take to take also the headers and we are going to apply the max function on the second column which is balance and the criteria if you see the criteria is where the president is equal to carlos salinas de gortari because of that we can use these cells as range then close it and we got the max value of the balance which is a negative value so it means that in all periods we got more imports than exports now for the mean value of the balance we are going to do almost the same we can copy the function and we can just change the function name and we are going to work with the same data the same table the same field 
and the same criteria range. And it is done. Let's get the average. The average in the database balance all second column and criteria from H11 to H12. The range is equal to max minus min. By the same way, we are going to get the standard deviation and variance. As I said, we can copy the function and paste it. But now the function name that we are going to work with is the stdef. And the same for variance. The function name is the var. 